you crazy chemistry people. All right, so part two. In order to continue on with what we're doing, you did page two, which was based on table K. I'm not going to really review that. But we need now to get to the down and dirty with what pH is and measuring all these changes. So now that we have the, some basics down, now we need to go into um, some mathematical basics. Now, before I do that, I do want to talk about things that we don't expect to be uh, acid and basic. Okay, for instance, if I drop sodium chloride into water, we know that we're going to make Na plus and Cl negative. Now, Cl negative, you notice chlorine has seven valence electrons. It's in the second to last row. So when it gains an electron, by losing an electron, we know it gets bigger, but more importantly, it becomes negative one. And now it has four lone pairs. So you would think, if I have hydrochloric acid and I produce an H+, we learned today or yesterday that this is the conjugate base, which is really four lone pairs. Now, I told you last night that strong acids have tremendously high Ka's because their conjugate base has no ability to do what? This can't accept a proton to reform the acid. That's the reason that's the reason that this is a strong acid. Strong acids on table L, you have five of them listed. They don't go back the other way because the conjugate base has no ability. You see, Mr. Grodsky, it's got four lone pairs. Can't the H plus be attracted to it? And it's negative. What did we learn about chlorine? We learn about the halogens. We know about uh, Cl, Br, iodine. They get bigger as they go down, right? But more importantly, they're negative one. They're always spectating. Chlorine, when it grabs an electron, gets big. Chlorine gets bigger, and it's negative one. What are we doing? We're stretching that negative one over a large area. This has low charge density. Coulomb's law. The radius gets big with low charge. H plus, even though there's a pair of electrons here, is not attracted enough to the chloride ion to reform the acid. That's why it's a strong acid. You with me? Anytime. Here's another acid. It's listed on table L. HNO3. It's called nitric acid. It breaks apart into H plus and NO3 minus. And we've seen NO3 minus before. It's always soluble. You've got four atoms with a negative one stretched over them. It's not enough charge to attract the H plus back. So strong acids, which have what kind of Ka? What are Ka's? Products over reactants. What are the products? If you produce a lot of H pluses, your Ka is through the roof. These guys have large Ka's because they go forward. They are complete completion reactions. Weak acids, weak acids last night, a weak acid. Here's an example, vinagre. If you're West Hampton, they say vinagre, I guess. <laughs> I don't know why. Other than vinagre bagel place, they speak like that too. I don't know why. So H, C2H2O is vinagre. What's it give off? H plus, and it comes C2H2O negative. This is a weak acid. Why is it weak? Its Ka is, instead of having Ka's that are 1 times 10 to the 8 or 9 or approaching infinity, this Ka is like 1 times 10 to the negative 7. I'm guessing, it's, I'm sure it's not, it's, it's small. And if you have a low Ka, it doesn't mean that, that, that most of this sticks together. Why? Because this conjugate base is good at accepting that. So weak acids don't dissociate because they have stronger conjugate bases. Okay? Now, keeping with that, why is sodium chloride a neutral salt? Because chloride is going to spectate. Sodium is going to spectate. They can't ionize water. Okay? Let's do another one. Calcium carbonate. Now, uh, so let's do that. Sodium carbonate. Washing soda. We dealt with this one. This is going to dissociate into Na+, spectates, and it's going to make what? CO3 negative 2. Can that accept two protons? 
It's negative two H pluses, and it's gonna have some oxygens with lone pairs. That's where the bicarbonate. So that's connected. So that's basic. I drop baking soda into water or washing soda into water. The pH is going to go up, and they call that pH up. They call that pH up. All right. And they call it pool companies. They say, "Hey, your pH is too low. You, they'll, they'll buy you pH up." All right. And it's just that which you can buy in a store, and they'll charge you nine times the money. Let me give you this salt. How about this guy right here? NH4Cl. That's going to break apart into what? Cl negative, which we know spectates, not going to do anything. But then we have this guy right here, NH4. Where have we seen this? Wasn't that the conjugate acid of NH3? Oh! So this and water is going to make what, you think? Isn't this going to donate H plus? And you're going to make what? H3O plus. It's going to be an acidic salt. Okay, you should be able to look at your salt, okay, and figure out right now a little bit about that. We'll get to that. All right. Let's go to identifying and what is pH. And take out your calculators, please, because we're going to need those. Because we're going to do some pH basics, and we're going to work on your worksheet here. Okay. Okay. We're going to start with what we call the auto-ionization of water. Water reaches equilibrium and will just by itself produce an H plus, this is a liquid, liquid, aqueous, and a hydroxide. Okay. Water will break apart into its ions. It will reach equilibrium, not a completion reaction. Now, it's not very good doing that, okay? But it does a little bit. Now, I can write it this way, or I can write it another way. They both mean the same way. I do it for a reason. I can write two waters that are liquids. Liquid. Now, here, if I draw it this way, we can use our bronston lowry definitions. We'll talk about, hey, this water donates an H+, plus, so one of the waters becomes H3O+, plus, and of course the other one loses an H. If this is the acid, its conjugate base has one less, OH-. minus. Okay? So they're the same thing. Whether you think about two water molecules donating and accepting to each other or one breaking apart, no one really knows. It's the same thing. But I do want to tell you guys that we call this the hydroxide ion, table E. This is a proton, and this is called a hydronium ion. It's a water holding on to a proton. And you need to understand that these guys are synonymous. Whether I say H plus or H3O plus, they represent the acidic part of water. Okay, they are synonymous. Okay, let's draw an equilibrium constant here. KQ, we have learned, is equal to the products over reactants. What are my products? The concentration. I'll write H plus. I'll write backslash H3O plus to remind us that. I can have either one of them. I talk about either one of the same thing. And I times it by the hydroxide concentration. Why did I just do that? It is products concentration over reactants. Coefficients become exponents. Solids and liquids do not apply. Since these are all liquids and don't have a, what, molarity? That is what my equilibrium constant looks like. And by the way, because this is special for water, we're just going to make this Kw. We use Ka's for acids, Kb for bases, and that's it right there. And not only that, 
We have measured this. We're going to learn that equilibrium constants are specific for temperatures. Not important right now, but we've measured this. The value of when this reaches equilibrium for water with no acid or base, the value of multiplying these molarities is 10 to the negative 14. That is tiny. That's point thirteen zeros in a 1. That means that there is not a lot of ions. Remember Ernie? What happened to Ernie when I put Ernie plugged in into water? Did he light up? Water is not a good electrolyte. Water does not produce enough free ions on its own to conduct electricity. It does produce some, but not enough. All right? So, watch this. Now, because I know it's equal to 10 to the negative 14, and because, here comes my stoichiometry, for every one of these, there's one H plus, one hydroxide. Hey, minus X, plus X, plus X. They're both going to be the same value, correct? That makes sense? One of these makes one of these and one of these. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. So these concentrations in pure water have to be the same. So what number times itself equals 10 to the negative 14? When you multiply exponents, you do what with them? Add. This would be 1 times 10 to the negative 7. 1 times 10 to the negative 7. Negative 7 plus negative 7 is negative 14. That, that's it. So if I've got pure water, nothing mixed in, that must be my concentrations because that's what they're multiplied together because that's the equilibrium constant. And at equilibrium, things stay constant. Everything we learned so far. Now, here's the magic. We do not like describing this number this way. Hey, what's the H plus ion concentration? Give me a second. 0.0000000, wait a minute, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1. That's the concentration today. Nobody likes talking about it. You say, well, why do we care? When these concentrations are too high or too low, water gets dangerous, especially for life. We want to measure what that pH and H plus is. This can break down what? Organic matter, so can this. We want to make sure what that range is when we don't have pure water. Nobody likes dealing with those numbers. Hey, what's the hydroxide today? Hold on, it's 0 .00, oh my gosh, I messed it up. So they have a better way, okay? Instead of looking at the entire number, they're gonna put this entire number into an exponent. It was a convention, someone said it's a, it's, it's a better way. So to do that, what we said is we're gonna do a pH. Stay with me. The pH, you heard about it. Little p means negative log. Little p means negative log. The h, we're going to say negative log of the h concentration. Okay, well, this is easy. What is the exponent in this number? 10 to the negative 7 is just negative 7, correct? So when you say negative log, you're telling me in a base 10 system, give me the exponent. So it's negative 7. See this negative here? Then times it by negative 1. So this would be what? pH of 7. All I'm doing is taking the exponent and then times by negative 1. Now, we can also do this one, and we should. This would become a pOH. You don't hear about pOH. pH gets all, you know, it's the pretty, it's the pretty, it's, it's, the, be, it's the better looking brother. Okay, the ugly duckling is, you know, so pH is the good looking brother and the ugly duckling, okay, pOH. And guess which one I was? Mongo was bigger and prettier. But in any case, um, but he had the Mongo name. Right, it's a little POH. It's negative log. And you can guess, for the same reason, the POH is equal to 7 as well. And this is a lot of fun. We're going to do the little P of this, which is negative log. Now, by the way, we're going to do the negative log of the KW. So we call that the PKW. And this number never changes. And heck, of course, that's going to be what? What's the, what's the exponent times 1? 14. 14. And so what do we know? Because when you multiply, because these are exponents, people. Negative logs are exponents. 
make that entire number into an exponent. They, they like that. And the reason why you can do that because there's a huge range. You can have an H plus ion concentration from point from one to what? Point zero 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 one. That's like the basic range. Who's gonna write those? It's easier to, to stuff the entire number as a what? Exponent in a base 10 scenario. So they do that. Now, notice something. Because these are exponents, what do we know? When you multiply them, aren't you adding them? So check it out. 14 is equal to 7 plus 7. The pKW equals the pH plus the pOH. Okay, it's going to simplify things as we do some problems today. Okay, so what does the pH mean? The pH is giving me an exponent. Now, I'm giving you easy problems. I'm going to explain this in a second. Now let's go back, all right, to understand this for a second. I'm going to increase and now add an acid to this solution. So let's instead... I'm going to increase the H plus or H3O plus a thousand times. This is going to get bigger by a thousand times. This was, this was negative seven. What's it now? Oh, well, let's, hold on. Let's leave it there for a second. As written, when a pH is seven, we're close to it, right? When a pH is seven, the other hydroxide has to be the same, correct? So when the pH is seven, we know that the H plus equals the hydroxide for the H3O plus. By the way, anyone know what they call this pH? Where you don't have more acidic or basic? It's neutral. neutral. Correct. This is neutral pH. Okay. I'm going to add an acid now. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add an acid to my solution, like me blowing CO2 into the solution. I'm going to increase this concentration. I'm going to change negative 7 into negative 4. Think with me for a second. It was 1 times 10 negative 7. Now it's 1 times 10 negative 4. Negative 4 increased by three zeros, correct? You with me? I, I did have 1 times 10 to the negative 7. Now I'm going to change the concentration to 1 times 10, negative 4. Isn't that an increase of 1,000 times? Yes. So I'm increasing the concentration 1,000 times. Stay with me. These numbers must equal this constant. What number plus 4? Minus 10. Minus 10. This number got bigger. This number got smaller. Who's winning? Who's the bigger concentration now? This is a bigger number, right? Yeah. Correct. So let's go figure out the pH. Negative log, what's that going to be now? Four. Four. My number is dropping if this concentration is getting bigger. This pOH is 10. And yes, it's 10 plus 4 equals 14. So when the pH is less, in this case, pH was what? Four. If it's less than 7, the H plus is greater than the hydroxide. That's what we call an acidic pH. And if I increase it more, this exponent gets smaller. So a decreasing of me bubbling acid in that demonstration I just did is going to drop your pH because why? As this number gets bigger, the negative exponent gets smaller. That's why it works. It's important you realize that. You can memorize it, but understand it. If I increase my what? Acidity 10 times. It becomes 1 times 10 to negative 3. That becomes a pH of 3. If I increase this 100 times, pH drops to 2. Every single decrease of an integer in your pH is really an exponent in the 10. So if you drop two integers, that's two zeros, 100 times increase. These are movements of base 10. Okay, let's go the other way now. Let's reset this to negative 7, negative 7. Now we're going to add a base, a base. 
I'm going to increase the hydroxide concentration. I'm going to increase it a thousand times. This was a negative seven. What's it go to now? One times 10 to the negative four. Remember, 10 to the three is a thousand. So if I add 10, 10 to the three to this, it's going to go the negative seven goes to 10 to the negative four. It's getting bigger by a thousand. That makes sense? Okay, good. Well, we know these numbers have to equal 14. So this is negative four. Negative four plus what number is 14? Negative 10. Oh, what's my pH? 10. POH is four. So my pH is above seven. So when a pH is 10, or what? Bigger, the H plus or H3O plus is less than the hydroxide. That's important, you understand that, and that's the basic range. And that should make sense to you mathematically. Hey, that number is smaller than that number. If I increase this number, that one's gotta get smaller for that to equal the same number. And a smaller negative I'm sorry, smaller value here with negative exponent means a bigger negative exponent. Now this is what? Nine zeros in front. Why would I say, hey, what's the pH of this solution here? Hold on. It's point zero 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 zero. Hold on. One, two, three, four. You can see how that's just not the best way. We could just use the exponent. Hey, it's a pH of 10. Got it. But I have to realize if I go from 10 to 9, my basicity is decreasing how many times? If I go from a pH of 10 to 9, my basicity is decreasing by how much? 10 times, right. If I go from 10 to 8, basicity is decreasing 100 times. My acidity is increasing how many times from 10 to 8? 100 times. You have to realize that. Okay, now, one more skill, and, we're, and we have everything we need to do the rest of the, the homework now. I was making you go this way, okay? To go from the concentration to the stuff into an exponent, we do negative log. Now, we can do these in our head because I'm giving you nice easy ones. 10 to the negative 10, 10 to the negative 9. Once I put a number in front, you need a calculator to do it. That's, that's why you have a log key. Now, to go back, if I have the pH and I want to go back to know the concentration, Sometimes they call this the anti-log key. Have you guys have had logs yet in math? So I'm teaching you logs. This is the best way to teach logs. So to go from this exponent, base 10, back to the actual number, we do 10 to the negative x. Why negative? We negative back. We're doing a negative log to make our negative what? Exponent positive. I've got to add back the negative. So think with me. If a pH is 10, what's the actual concentration? 10 to the negative 10, that's that number. So to go backwards, we do 10 to the negative x. Okay, and I wanna do a problem right here based upon what I just have here. Right now, do I have an acidic, basic, or a neutral pH right here? Well, it'd be neutral if it was seven. If the pH was seven, then these guys would both be equal, but because it's above seven, it's what? It's basic, which means who's leading? Who has a bigger amount? Who is leading? Is it H, H pluses or H3O pluses or the hydroxides? Hydroxides are bigger. The hydroxides are bigger. That means that the H plus value is smaller, which means a bigger negative exponent. Okay, I hope you can see that. And I know maybe you've had this before. I know I did this for you in EP Bio. Yeah, I remember. Okay, but I want to make sure you completely understand this. Okay? All right, now, let's go calculate exactly with this pH is changing on me I want to know exactly so I'm gonna get rid of some stuff here I'm gonna leave some notes up here so let's do this okay so here's my problem I have a pH and that pH 
is 7.84. Here's my question. Exactly what is the concentration of my H plus or my H3O plus? What do I know? I know that H plus or H3O plus concentration, it's a synonymous, times my hydroxide always equals what? 10 to negative 14, correct? Always. The pH was a negative log. So I want to convert it. So here's what I do. I take my handy dandy calculator. Okay, turn it on. I try not to knock over all my equipment. Okay. I don't know if I'm, boy, that's not gonna work. Oh, too close and personal. Oh boy. And I only had the TI 83 plus. I don't have the TI 950 backlit, makes your coffee, says hello to you. Um, okay, it has Wi-Fi, so you can cheat with other people. Okay, um, so here's, I don't know if you can see me. I'll go over here. Ah, look at that. I'm in this mode with Cleo, that baby. Uh, and I need my glasses, because I'm just that old. Uh, I, oh, there they are. Yes. All right, so let's clear it. Am I clear? Hold on. Second mode. Second, yeah. Clear. I'm in, I'm in the. Okay, hold on. <laughs> I've got issues, you know that. All right. There we go. Lower right will do. Okay, so I'm going to take 10 to the negative x. So I do second, uh, I do second function, Christmas. Second function, should not have worn my contacts today. 10 to the negative x. It's a carrot key you guys love. And I put not 7.84. Remember, I did negative log. I took this negative exponent, whatever it was, and made it positive. I've got to return it back to a negative. So it's 10 to the negative 7.84. 10 to the negative 7.84. Close the parentheses, hit enter. Okay, and so what I get, party people, okay? Oh, Christmas, I broke something. Okay. Uh, what do I get? I get 1.4, I'll round to 1.45. This e to the negative 8 just means 10 to the negative 8. Party people, that is my concentration of my H plus or H3O plus. So what do I do? To go back, I did 10 to the negative x, 10 to the negative 7.4, and now my concentration is 1.45 times 10 to the negative 8. What's my hydroxide concentration? Because I want to compare. I'm telling you that the pH that we started with, even though it's changing in front of us, okay, that I'm telling you that this is above 7. I told you that it must be basic. That means that this number for the hydroxide needs to be bigger, yes? Now I can do it two ways. Don't I know that the H plus times that equals this number? So I can solve for X and do 10 to the fourth divide by that, but I love the pOH. So what do we know? If the pH was 7 point what? 84 plus the pOH equals 14, I'm gonna subtract my, my 14 right there. Yeah, six, so what'd you hit? Six point what? Six. Six point one. Six. Okay, I'm slower. Okay, <laughs> okay, that's my what? POH. And to go from my POH back to my hydroxide, what do I do? My POH is 6.16. This equals 14 is so much easier. So go back, we gotta go 10 to the negative. 6.16. So I go clear, so I go second function, 10 to the x, and I go negative 6.16er. And what do I get? 6.92 times 10 to the what? Negative 7. Party people, these numbers are pretty close, aren't they? That's why we're close to seven.
but one of the numbers is slightly bigger. Which is the bigger number? 1.45 times 10 negative 8 or 6.92 times 10 negative 7? Yeah, this one is bigger. That's your hydroxide. That's why this is above 7 and basic. Okay? And again, if I do what? Add an acid. In this case, CO2, a Lewis acid. <laughs> okay. Did it went up? No, it went down. It went down, right? Yeah. I got to spin this. Okay. So it's going to go down. Okay, it's going down because I'm increasing this value. And this one has to do what? To keep equaling 10 to the 14. Okay, let's go and do some problems. Okay, uh, and I lost, I stepped on my cat. So, yeah, I, I see that. So I don't like this one anymore. This one, this one this one's a good one. Ah. Okay, Moses, why are you religious? Okay, <laughs> let's go to the table. Turn this off, oh Christmas, and let's do some homework problems together. We'll do as many as we can. And you'll see that as crazy as this all looks, you're going to say, I like it at some point. Maybe you won't. Okay. Uh, maybe yeah, I'm just I don't not. Know. <laughs> yeah. All right. I do lie sometimes. Okay. Not quite as much as um, our leaders of a nation. But in any case. All right. Um, <laughs> Whoa. What? Some leaders lie. I don't know who they might be. Okay. Now. Okay. I'm gonna disconnect because I'm gonna really, it's gonna be really funny when everything goes flying. Okay, so here we go. So let's go on to page. Okay, we should know our strong bases, right? And I'm not, strong bases of course would be, I'm not gonna write that. Let's do this one. Well, let's do our strong bases, it's important to know that. The strong bases, which are the following would be strong bases? We would say group one ions, Group one ions plus the hydroxide. Because notice, look, hydroxides, NaOH, are soluble. Okay, so do we have NaOH, LiOH, I should start with that one. We have potassium OH, all group one ions, rubidium. OH, sesnium OH. And are there some exceptions? Yeah. These guys also are soluble in low concentrations. So we also have calcium. That's plus two, so you need two hydroxides. Barium hydroxide and strontium. This means that these guys completely dissociate and produce a lot of OHs. These guys produce twice as many OHs. Careful with that one. Okay. Now, look at this. What would be the pH of a one molar KOH solution? Now, because it's a strong base and it completely dissociates, every one of these is going to break apart into one K plus that we don't care about. It just, it's sorry, just spectates into one hydroxide. So if every one of these becomes a hydroxide, isn't this the concentration of the hydroxide? Yeah. Yes, that's the key. So what do I know? The concentration of my hydroxide is equal to one molar. What's the pH? Guys, I'm starting over here. It's one molar. That's kind of weird, but that's, isn't that one times 10 to the zero? One times 10 to the zero is one. Right? So what's the pH? If you don't trust me, if I have the concentration here as one, do negative log of it. Do the negative log of one. And how do you do that? You do second function, negative, I'm oh, sorry, you do, um, uh, where's the log? No, the log, my log buds out second. So I do negative log of <laughs> one. Uh, of what? Yeah, one. And you should get a zero. Negative log of one is zero. 
You don't have to know it, you can just put it in. I get a zero, okay? So, what's that mean? What did I just solve for? I just solved for the POH. I did a negative log of that. So I found the POH to be what? To be zero. What are they looking for? The pH, right? What do we know? Isn't the POH plus the pH equal 14? So what do you think the pH is? That's simple. Okay, now, check this out. This is a strong acid. You say, Mr. Grotsky, how do I know? Because you're always gonna have this table. HNO3 is a strong acid, how do I know? Look at its Ka. They don't even give you a number. That means it, it, every single one of those does what? Dissociates. So if this is the concentration of the strong acid, every one of these produces 1H+, correct? So as many of these strong acids is the same number of that, correct? Right, strong acid, strong basis. So let's go find the pH. Well, guess what? The concentration of the H plus is equal to 3.4 times 10 to negative three. I wanna find the pH. Well, isn't that the H plus or HVO plus? So the pH is a negative log of that. So take the negative log of that number. So I do negative log, Christmas in July, negative log of, now I do 3.4, I do second function, okay, because I want to do the EE key, I hit the EE key, and that just means exponent 10, I do negative 3, close my parentheses, and I get 2.46, 2.47. Pretty simple. Number five, what will be the pH of this? Okay, we'll do this and I'll be the last one we do together. This is a strong base, isn't it? Barium hydroxide is a strong base, correct? That means that this is exactly the concentration of the barium hydroxide, correct? And because all of the OHs come out, check this out. Isn't there two of these? So to get the concentration of hydroxide, what am I doing with this? I got to times it by two, stoichiometry. This is the concentration of this formula, but there's two hydroxides. So I'm gonna take that number, 2.48, second function, EE to the negative four, I'm gonna times it by two. That gives me 4.96, okay? That gives me the concentration of my hydroxide to equal 4.96, times 10 to the negative four. Okay, what do I do with that? Well, if it's the concentration of hydroxide is equal to 4.96 times 10 to the negative four, I'm gonna go find myself a pOH. Why? Because when I add it to the what? pH, it equals 14. So once I find this, I just subtract from 14 to find the pH. That's what's so simple about that. So I take my 4.96 and I'm gonna do negative log. So negative log, 4.96, second function EE, to the negative four, close my parentheses, and I get a pOH to be 3.3. You can do the math in your head now. 14 minus that, 10.7. The pH is 10.7. Does that make sense? Yeah, check it out. Isn't this number bigger than one times 10 to negative seven that we started with? Okay. So the rest of your homework, just be careful. When you're dealing with these strong bases with two hydroxides, you're gonna have to double that concentration. So your homework is to finish, okay? The, um, the two worksheets. Um, ah, we didn't get to the last page. So finish this page. Um, I'll, ex I'll explain explicitly, okay, uh, what you have to do for homework. I'll change that today, okay? Have a great day, guys. We covered a lot.